All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back in. Just doing a quick update in terms of NFL news. Stuff is going to be happening soon. Aaron Rodgers, apparently the decision is imminent. That's why I'm doing this quick video, getting it up, and we'll see when the Aaron Rodgers news comes, but ESPN said today that it was imminent. Obviously, a lot of real-world stuff going on, Russia invading Ukraine, things like that, but there is football news. The first thing I want to talk about, I have it right here, is the whole uh, Rodgers situation with the Green Bay Packers GM saying he never promised to trade Aaron Rodgers. And I'm going to actually read off this little excerpt. It says, so what will the Packers do if Rod? So what will the Packers do if Rodgers decides he wants to play in 2022 but not for Green Bay? The Packers GM says those are some hypotheticals that I don't think we're going to go down those roads right now. Uh, it has been widely believed that Rodgers and the Packers had a handshake agreement that if the reigning MVP still wanted out of you know, after the 2021 season that they would trade him. The Packers GM denying that, saying that is not something I told him. This makes absolutely no sense. All of the power right now is in Aaron Rodgers' court. I don't understand the Packers GM here. They restructured his contract last year so Aaron Rodgers would have all of the power. If you say, hey Aaron, if Aaron Rodgers says, I want to leave, but the Packers GM says, we're not training you, it simply doesn't matter. Aaron Rodgers could just retire from football. So the Packers... The question is, do the Packers want to get assets like first-round picks, like young players back for Aaron Rodgers, or do they want to just let Aaron Rodgers retire or lose and lose him for nothing? Obviously, they're going to want assets, so I'm not sure what the GM is implying here. It makes no sense. When you restructured his contract, you gave him the power. It seems like the Packers GM is a little pissy that Rodgers is leaving. I've said before, Aaron Rodgers will be leaving Green Bay. He is demanding a trade. Some people think he could retire. The dude's kind of weird, but he's not retiring, guys. He will be demanding a trade, and there are teams that are lining up with offers. I do not understand where this delusion the Green Bay Packers think they can keep Aaron Rodgers. He wanted to, he, he wanted out last year. He wanted out last year. They said, let's give it a year. They gave it a year. One first-round exit later, he's going to want out. Well, you know, And then their GM comes out and says, I never said I was trading him. You're going to have to trade him, or you're going to lose him for nothing. He's just going to retire. So that's the situation there. We've also got the Packers restructuring Aaron Jones's pay. That's in hopes of potentially getting you know Aaron Rodgers re-signed along with getting Devontae Adams. If they did re-sign Aaron Rodgers to like a two-year deal, they would have to tag Devontae Adams because they wouldn't have enough money. If Aaron Rodgers leaves, they would have money for a long-term Devontae Adams contract. But at that point, I don't think Devontae Adams would want to commit long-term to the Packers due to the Jordan Love situation. So that is that. We've also got Adam Schefter suggesting that the 49ers might plan to keep Jimmy Garoppolo after this offseason. Schefter said Kyle Shanahan and the Niners could stick with Garoppolo in 2022, in large part because the QB is popular with teammates and Trey Lance is still a ways to go in his development as an NFL passer. To me, this says more about Trey Lance's being Trey Lance being unready than it does about Garoppolo. If I was uh, the 49ers and 49ers fans, this would be a very discouraging turn of events if Jimmy Garoppolo is your starting quarterback going into next year. Nothing against Jimmy Garoppolo. He's just one of those guys. Like if I were to rank all 32 starting quarterbacks, he'd probably be 15th or 16th. So he's very average. Um, he can still win games. He has a great career record. I understand that. But in terms of winning a Super Bowl, it's going to be very, very tough to win one with him. So I take what I take out of that update is there's some concerns about the former number three overall pick, Trey Lance, and is he going to be ready after one season? We remember Trey Lance played just one game his junior year at North Dakota State uh, due to the pandemic and everything with that. So kind of some question marks right now about Trey Lance, about them investing that number three overall pick. We've also got... Deshaun Watson stuff. Uh, Mike Florio reports that multiple teams are willing to trade for Deshaun Watson with civil cases that still pending. So they would trade for him right now. And it makes complete sense. If I'm the Houston Texans, I am saying no way. Because all of those teams that are going to be trying to trade for Deshaun Watson right now while the civil cases is still pending just want to get Deshaun Watson at a discount so they have more leverage by saying, we don't know, he might be suspended for a year. 
They just want more leverage. If I'm Houston, I'm not buying it at all. I'm saying we're waiting for this whole thing to be cleared, Deshaun Watson to be back, and we're getting minimum two first-round picks. Their original asking price price was three first-round picks, but this is clearly just a ploy by other teams to potentially lower Deshaun, Wask- Deshaun Watson's asking price by, by saying he still has these civil suits, he might be suspended for a year, we don't know what's happening, we're only going to give you a first-round pick because he might be suspended, they just want to trade for him at a discount, Houston, please don't buy into that, that is ridiculous. And then just another quick thing, last night we heard... You know, it's kind of overshadowed by the whole uh, uh, World War III, but uh, Troy Aikman is indeed leaving Fox for ESPN Monday Night Football. So he's been at Fox for a while, and it is going to be odds, you know, hearing Troy Aikman call Monday Night Football games. I think he does a fine job. I really don't you know, get too caught up in the color commentaries, commentators, things like that. People always just go crazy about, oh, I hate Joe Buck. I I really don't hate any of them. But apparently he's, you know, you'd think he'd have a good friendship with Joe Buck working all those years. You would think that, you know, he would potentially take Joe Buck with him on to the Monday Night Football and and they'd work out a deal like that. They are speculating that that's what's going to happen. There's been nothing, uh, you know, confirming Joe Buck is going to Monday Night Football on ESPN, but that could happen. He could go along with Troy Aikman and they would both be calling Monday Night Football, which would be kind of like a shock to a lot of fans, at least the first few weeks, getting used to that. And then Fox would have to fill some pretty big seats, losing their top two guys. And then also the Sean McVay thing, really unique, interesting situation with Sean McVay, uh, you know, possibly retiring for a little bit and going to the booth. This is what I'm going to say about the Sean McVay thing. It's so weird. Sean McVay's salary as the Rams head coach, as a Super Bowl winning coach last year, was I believe $8 million. Tony Romo's salary that CBS paid for for him to call games was $16 million. So basically double. And Sean McVay is, again, such a unique spot where he's so young. He's already been to two Super Bowls. He's already won one Super Bowl. He could jump into the booth. You know, the the, the, the rumor here is with Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime would, would pay him to do the Thursday night broadcast. He could jump into the booth, make more as a commentator, then in 10 or 12 years come back to coaching. I don't think that's what's going to happen. But I'm just saying it is weird how, you know, Sean McVay could get almost double what he's making uh, you know, just to call games, kind of like Tony Romo. Tony Romo obviously retired, but Sean McVay as a coach, really interesting. I think he's still got at least a few more years with the Rams to where he could take a little hiatus, go, you know, go be in the booth for a few years, make more money, and then come back. He's so young. He is such a young coach to have already been to two Super Bowls and won and win one Super Bowl. And then, guys, this is just a quick article I saw that I wanted to go over because I am doing this format on the computer. It says NFL players who need a change of scenery. I'm going to quickly go through this. Uh, Dallas Cowboys, Connor Williams. Connor Williams has started, yeah, 51 of 57 games. To me, Connor Williams, my reaction, he's always been an average player. He's always been an average guard. I do remember when people thought he was going to be an elite left tackle out of Texas. That never happened. Evan Ingram needs a change of scenery. He is a big body athletic tight end. That'd be interesting. Jalen Rager, what a disaster pick that was. It's unfortunate. I never liked that pick. I, I never liked that pick. Uh, Washington Commanders, uh, Brandon Sheriff, wasn't he like a first round pick? Didn't they pay him a bunch of money? That's interesting. Allen, yeah, Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson is a free agent, though. Allen Robinson, I hope, goes to the Browns. Trey Flowers, the DT, the defensive, uh, the edge rusher. I think he was on New England. Yeah, he was on New England. Zendaria Smith. Oh, my God. Zendaria Smith has a really bad contract. Really bad. He's a good player, but still. Daniil Hunter. A veteran, yeah, I could see him go into a team that has a better chance to win. Hayden Hurst, who's going to resurrect Hayden Hurst's career? It certainly isn't going to be Matt Ryan, but I think Hayden Hurst is a big-bodied guy. I believe he was drafted by Baltimore in the second round. Yeah, Kyle Pitts, you're not, you're Hayden Hurst. You can't go back with Kyle Pitts there. There's no way. Ian Thomas, Ian Thomas from Indiana, the tight end, kind of an undersized tight end. Really, not really a big fan on Ian, Ian Thomas. Bradley Roby would be an interesting guy as a cornerback too. Probably a good cornerback too on a certain team, or maybe even a slot cornerback. OJ Howard. Um, yeah, I mean, it just hasn't worked out for O.J. Howard with Tampa Bay. Jordan Hicks, the linebacker formerly of 
the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, Arizona. I didn't even know he was on Arizona. Joe Noteboom. Who the hell is that? Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah, Jimmy Garoppolo. But again, I just had that article saying they might keep Jimmy Garoppolo because Trey Lance isn't ready. So who knows with that one. But yeah, Jimmy Garoppolo, you would think. I saw a thing where the Steelers, Steelers fans were like, you know, we'll trade for Jimmy Garoppolo. As a Browns fan, be my guest. You could take Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo ain't winning anything. He's not winning a thing. LJ Collar. First round pick, dude, This I'll tell you what, Seattle always, whenever they have a first round pick, they always reach for players. They always, always reach for players that are like no names. Not sure who that is, some guard, Jesse Davis, Nikhil Harry, you remember Nikhil, Nikhil Harry, I think got picked higher than DK Metcalf. Give him a change. Maybe the Browns, no, this kid, he, I think he's just a bust. I th unfortunately, I saw Nikhil Harry at Arizona State and I was like, this dude's a beast. Maybe a team like the Browns take a chance. They need receivers on Nikhil Harry. Uh, Denzel Mims. There's another kind of receiver. Second round pick. Wasn't he at Memphis? Denzel Mims, I remember. Second round pick of the Jets in 2020. Already they're giving up on him. Alejandro Villanueva. He's old. He is old. I'm not sure he would start. Trey Waynes. I think he has a cap. Yeah, he has a cap hit of 15 million. Jarvis Landry, absolutely. I was talking about Jarvis Landry. The Browns wanted Jarvis Landry to restructure his contract. It's, it's not happening. He got pissy, so he went on Twitter and had a meltdown. Uh, but Jarvis Landry, the Browns are not paying him $16 million. They can save all of that. There's barely any dead money they get from cutting him, so they're going to cut him for sure. Eric Ebron. Eric Ebron barely got any targets. Did he even receive a target last year? Let's be honest. Justin Reed. Get out of Houston, son. Marlon Mack. You got to feel bad for this kid, the ACL, I think. Was it the ACL or MCL? One of the two. You've got Jonathan Taylor there. The writing's on the wall. Move on, son. Brandon Linder. I think this dude has a massive contract. Third highest cap value on the roster. Yeah. When I was looking at their cap, Jacksonville's jack, cap situation, I was like, they're paying their center the third highest? Something's not right with that. Something's not right. Rashawn Evans. Bama bust, another Bama bust, not surprised. Melvin Gordon the third. he had kind of a decent year last year. God, how many teams are there in the NFL? I'm trying to speed run this. Frank Clark, what a bust of a salary that was. Corey Littleton, wasn't he on, I think, the Packers? That's all I know about him. Storm Norton, okay, that's enough. They, they just started naming random, random players that aren't even in the NFL at the end there. They don't even know what they're doing. Guys, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. We're getting Aaron Rodgers news within the next couple days, I'm sure. I thought it would have already been announced by like the 20th, but we will be getting it soon. Make sure you're following me once again on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I am, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.